resuming debate. The Honourable Member for Courtney Alberni. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a huge honour to rise today uh, to speak to Bill C-210. I, I want to first start by sharing a story uh, with my colleagues in, in the House of fellow Vancouver Islander Paul Underhill. Paul lives with cystic uh, fibrosis and just this past April, he completed a, a five kilometre run and a, a five kilometre walk to commemorate the double lung transplant he received 10 years ago. Paul was raising awareness for BC Transplant, uh, who say that there are more than 700 people currently on a wait list for an organ transplant in British Columbia. Around 5,500 British Columbians are alive today because of organ donation. And in the past year alone, 451 lives were saved because of organ donors. In Paul's words, he states, I want people to realize how much of an impact it can have. Just two minutes of your life to register and you can literally save a life. Inspired by Paul and the stories of others, some not so fortunate, I'm honored to again to rise today to speak on this bill. And this bill that's been tabled by my good friend uh, from Calgary Federation, who's been determined on this bill. And in the last parliament, he tabled Bill C-316, which I was a seconder of and uh, an honor to be so, and also worked with my Liberal colleague from Oakville, North Burnaby, uh, on this bill, because this bill shouldn't be a partisan issue, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to saving lives, um, lives that can be preventable and saved through the help of others. We should be working collectively together. And, and again, I want to thank my, my good friend from Calgary Confederation for his determination to see this through. Uh, bill C-210 allows the federal government to coordinate with provinces and territories to allow Canadians to register as an organ and tissue donor through their federal tax filing. And we know Canadians right now are currently dying, like I stated, on wait lists because our organ donation rate is so unacceptably low. At present, only 20% of Canadians have joined their province's organ and tissue registry. This is unacceptable. And at the end of 2018, the most recent year of available data, there were 4,351 people on a waiting list for an organ transplant across Canada, including 2,890 who were active on that list. And in total, 223 people died while waiting for a transplant. And in order to meet this demand, improved coordination across provinces and territories is critical and is needed. As New Democrats, we believe that we may, must make every possible effort to ensure that every Canadian who needs an organ or tissue transplant receives it. One donor can save up to eight lives and benefit more than 75 people. And yet at 18 donors per million people, Canada's current donation rate puts us in the lower third of developed countries. Allowing Canadians to register as an organ and tissue donor through their tax returns will help increase registration rates, improve consent rates, and help build a donation culture in Canada. As New Democrats, we support the adoption of a presumed uh, consent or opt-out system for organ and tissue donation. We understand that such an approach would make a huge difference in the number of organs available to save lives. Um, you know, one potential concern I know has been raised in association with the act is the unauthorized sharing of personal information. However, individuals would still be required to consent to that sharing of that information before the agency would share that information with other levels of government for the purpose of being added to an organ and tissue donor registry. So that's covered off. And in the previous parliament, that the Standing Committee on Health undertook a study on organ donation in Canada, uh, meeting with key stakeholders. And this act aligns with longstanding advocacy and legislative work of New Democrats around organ donation. Uh, in February 2016, the MP for uh, Edmonton Manning, whose own son has been the recipient of three donated livers, reintroduced a private member's bill calling for a national registry. The bill had been previously, you know, introduced seven times. Well, similar bill had been introduced seven times by both uh, a liberal and two new Democrats. Lou Sakura did it. Uh, Judy uh, uh, was say, uh, Salish uh, 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 Lease uh, tabled it, uh, a new Democrat. Malcolm Allen, another new Democrat uh, in 2009 and again in 2013. But unfortunately, you know, in the last parliament, the Liberal caucus voted to defeat the MP for Edmonton Manning's bill. 
um, this act, uh, you know, aligns with longstanding advocacy and legislative work, as I've cited, of new Democrats around organ donation. The bill is essentially, you know, a, a critical piece to creating a pan-Canadian uh, 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 organ uh, donor registry, and, and it needs to be uh, pushed forward. You know, Mr. Speaker, you know, the, the previous bill, Bill C-316, which passed in the House of Commons, went to the upper house where it was stalled out. Uh, it died there in the, in the past parliament. Um, you know, it's a shameful uh, that people's lives are being lost because of politics. Uh, the Liberals, again, uh, previously killed the Pan-Canadian Registry without studying it. Um, the push for rapid implementation of the Pan-Canadian Data and Performance System for organ donation, and, and it needs to be, you know, moved quickly, Mr. Speaker. And we're offering our nonpartisan support for this sensible proposal. And, you know, it, again, the, the Liberals saw this pass, it went to the Senate. They've had ample time to implement the contents of this bill that could have saved lives. I, I urge the government for quick passage, all members of parliament to support this bill and get it to the upper house. And I urge the upper house to pass this and give it royal assent quickly because people's lives are at stake, uh, Mr. Speaker. And the sense of urgency couldn't be greater. Um, I, I do want to talk about, uh, you know, some more, uh, more importantly about some stories, but I'll get to that in a second. As New Democrats, again, we've consistently advocated for the adoption of a presumed consent or an opt-out system, as I stated, for organ donation, because it, it's such a, an approach would make a huge difference in the number of organs available to save lives. Unlike our current opt-in system. An opt-out approach would automatically register all citizens for or organ donation unless they choose to indicate otherwise. And I'll speak a little bit about countries with opt-out systems that consistently record higher donation rates than opt-in countries like ours. Indeed, this approach has helped to make Spain a world leader in organ donation, which the previous speaker just spoke about over the last 25 years. In Austria, the donor rate quadrupled after instituting an opt-out legislation and similar regulations in Belgium doubled kidney donations. The most important success of this system has been that it's led to organ donation being routinely considered when a patient dies, regardless of the circumstances of death. Mr. Speaker, I've heard from many people, stories of Canadians who've donated uh, organs they inspire me. Uh, Megan Walker, good friend of mine from Parksville, she reached out to me last night to share her story. She donated her liver to her best friend, Michelle, saving her li life. Michelle has two young children. Uh, she had one before the transplant and one since the transplant, Mr. Speaker. She's a loving family, and that organ donation kept her alive. It saved her life. Um, Lorelei... Rosano from Nanaimo. She recently shared a story with me through my childhood friend, Bonnie Bartlett. And it's about her daughter, Shannon uh, McIntosh, and who received a, a transplant. She, she, she told me this story, and I'm going to quote it, uh, Mr. Speaker. She states, I'll never forget hearing my daughter needed a liver transplant and that she only had a few months to live. I watched my daughter waste away as she fought to hold on. Then came the call. It was bittersweet. What brought us hope brought sorrow to another family. Well, this is too often the case, Mr. Speaker, you're right. And uh, back to her story, on February 1st, 2021, Shannon got her new liver. One day later, she was standing. A week later, she was walking around the hospital floor. Four weeks later, she was walking around the block. And eight weeks later, she was walking 10,000 steps at a time. Now I can barely keep up with her, uh, Lorelei st states. Through the process, Shannon learned her donor was a young person. She cried when she heard that. There are no words big enough to describe our gratitude to the donor's family. I hope to meet them one day and to say thank you in person. Their decision to be an organ donor gave our family the most precious gift of all, the gift of life. Mr. Speaker, Shannon, Michelle, and Paul wouldn't be here without donors, without the people that had the, 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 the goodwill to put their names on these lists. And there's many others that overlook that, that would like to be donors, Mr. Speaker. We need to fast track this legislation because we know that there's thousands and thousands of people that aren't as lucky as Shannon, Michelle, and Paul. And this is an opportunity for us to stand united. And again, I, I wanna thank my friend from Calgary Confederation for using his slot 
in the in the draw. He was first this time for parliamentarians and his determination to see this through. Let's get behind him. Let's get behind all those people on those waiting lists and let's save some lives and work together. Thank you. Before we get to uh, resuming debate, I see the Honourable Minister of Northern Affairs is uh, rising on a point of order. We'll go to him. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. An agreement could not be reached under the provisions of Standing Order 78-1 or 78-2 with respect to the second reading stage of Bill C-19, an act to amend the Canada Elections Act, COVID-19 response. Under the provisions of Standing Order 78-3, I give notice that a Minister of the Crown will propose at the next sitting a motion to allot a specific number of days or hours for the consideration and disposal of proceedings at the said stage. I'm sure the House appreciates the notice provided by the Honourable Minister. We'll now go to resuming debate and the Honourable Member for Simcoe Gray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 